This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics. While I was planning on making a mini mulcher video today, I ended up designing a new weapon for mini mulcher and running into some other problems with the actual physical robot, so I've just ordered this new shuriken blade design from Send Cut Send. I'll have that probably by the end of this week, and that means that'll delay my plans for the mini mulcher video by a week, but it means that I also have the chance to do a spinner design part four where I can cover how to make an asymmetric drum style weapon and also how to use a service such as my channel sponsored PCB way to get that machined. And you can get it machined out of a hardened steel or a steel that is unhardened that you then have to get heat treated later on. So uh, if you're interested in this blade design, I am not going to go into over how I designed this, but it is much easier to design symmetrical weapons than to design asymmetrical ones. All you have to do is make, in this case, one third of the weapon and then do a circular pattern and then boom, you're done. Just like I did with the holes in my last video where I showed how to do asymmetric weapons with a hole pattern. Um, and you can actually buy this weapon design right now if you go to my website, uh, check it out, uh, justcauserobotics.com. All right, enough selling you things for now. I'm going to show the simplest form of an asymmetric kind of a beater bar. So this will be styled kind of like... Um... All right, so you can see here in this video, one of my fights with Division against a robot called Voxel. Let's fight! Oh, and both pots up to speed. Decides to take his aggression out on the floor. Oh, that one runs it hits. Division just disappeared and reappeared right behind Voxel. That weapon is going so fast. Brings back up. Can he get some hits in? Oh, oh, oh. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. The the brick. So yeah, that was all that, that happened in that fight. Um so yeah, obviously I lost that one pretty handily on account of Voxel. Voxel has, I believe, a couple different versions of their beater, one of which is an asymmetric beater. So I'm going to show how to do something similar to that. Um, it's going to be pretty similar to how I showed doing an asymmetric weapon before, um, but just a different plane of uh, symmetry. So what I'm going to do here is create a line of symmetry here. And then what basically we're going to do is make a thick part that is a counterweight. And we're going to make it symmetric. So I'm going to select symmetry, click both of these, click this. That is now symmetric about the center line. And then I'm going to do a further away over here. And I'm actually just going to make these uh, go linear. And then we just need some side walls. And once again, I'll make those two lines symmetric. And then we're basically going to have to adjust things. So the idea here will be the center of rotation axis will be this one. I'm just going to force that to be horizontal so I don't have a problem later. It's already horizontal, okay. Um, so what we want to do is make sure that we have some amount of tooth protrusion. So I'm going to pick totally arbitrary values here. That's pretty good. And then what we can do is hit E for extrude. And what we're going to do is switch this to symmetric. And then maybe we do quarter inch thick. No. Maybe a half inch thick to start with. Now, if I make my sketch visible again, we can see where this line is. I'm going to create a sketch here and we can just create what would eventually be a bearing pocket. So let's say, I don't know, this is going to be a half inch bearing. That's pretty small. Maybe it's three quarter inch bearing pocket that goes through the whole thing. And then I'm actually going to change that to be through instead of just dragging because that's better practice. 
Now we can add this sketch. Go to insert, or sorry, inspect, center mass, this object, boom. All right, so first things first, center mass needs to now be centered about this axis, which we defined to be basically this origin axis. Um, that's why we did the symmetric command. So if we go into our properties, we can see, well, I can see that the, uh, let me do the copy thing so you can see it too, actually. So the center of mass location is right now 8.213 millimeters up in the uh, y direction and we want to fix that to be basically close to zero. Let me change everything to inches just to make things a little easier for us Americans here. All right, so now it's at 0.323 inches. Uh, so basically, we're gonna make this a lot thicker while trying to maintain some difference in the uh, overall, like, stick out. Um, let's say I want this to be two inches and this to be like one point five inches maybe from the center so it's a question of how thick does this have to be i'm also going to mention this these are probably all like too thick actually i'll make that 0.375 obviously this is like really basic and we can add stuff to it oh wow that was a good guess looks like so now We are only 20 thousandths away and we went too far down. So here's where we can start playing around with other features. So uh, you'll notice if we actually were to figure out a rake angle like we do for a regular weapon. Right now, this is actually a pretty terrible design because it effectively has a negative rake angle. So that's one thing that we can fix. Um, so by a negative rake angle, I mean this impacting surface has extends past this line going from the rotation axis. So we can fix that by just having a line here that is say the half inch that we know is the stick out. And then we just create a tangent arc. And we can create another construction line or regular line here and mirror that to the other side. Whoops, there we go. Again, this doesn't have to be, this is already going to have to be machined on this side to get the bearing pockets in. So we'll do that. And now at the neutral rake angle, and I'll add some fillets here. Oops. So now we have a neutral rake angle and obviously you can do something crazier if you want. Um, but we now have it down even further. So let's see what we can do about that. One thing we could do is fillet these edges. Looks like we need to do more than that. Oh, we also need to add fillets here because if an end mill is gonna machine this, there will be tool radii of a certain size. So I actually am gonna have to bring this down anyway, probably to make a radius that isn't too small. I would say an eighth inch would be probably the absolute minimum, but realistically 0.15, I would say is like a better minimum for this and again these can be changed pretty arbitrarily um 
0.15 would allow you to use a 0.25 inch diameter end mill. Um, you ain't doing a 0.125 radius doesn't really let you do that because when the end mill is trying to cut this corner, it effectively is moving at zero speed to make a radius that is exactly the tool radius. So you actually do need to go a bit beyond, but you can see here, um, well, actually it doesn't really matter that the bearing pocket intersects there because bearing is only going to be in so far. In fact, we can make it more clear that that's the case by instead of going through all, we can just make this say, all right, for some reason, OBS decided to screw with me there. So uh, uh, there's some stuff I did that didn't get shown, but essentially what I did was I changed this through hole. I changed, whoops, sorry. I changed the uh, bearing through hole to be a quarter inch deep pocket for a bearing. And then I made a new through hole that's actually for the shaft. And then I simply mirrored this pocket across this plane to the other side. So instead of a bearing through hole, there's actually like a pocket for the bearing to sit into. And then you could use like a green Loctite to retain it. Or if you get your tolerance is perfect, you can just get a press fit that you insert the bearing with an Arbor press, which would be the preferred method. And then Bob's your uncle. So doing a little more tweaking here. Uh, I'm gonna go properties, copy clipboard, I just basically spent a little bit of time tweaking uh, some dimensions here. So I've got one inch here, 1.4 inches to the end of the offset uh, counterweight, two inches to the end of the tooth. So that means we have 0.6 inches that the tooth can bite, essentially. And then I've got three eighths of uh, wall thickness here and here, and the entire beater is constrained to four inches wide. Um, I also am going to set the material now. I'll set it to AR500 even though it could just be... Actually, you know what? May as well go with the steel that I can order it machined out of. So, boom. And then properties. So this beater now is about 10 ounces which is a pretty good weight for a beetle width sized uh, beater bar. And got the bounding box and the moment of inertia and everything. You can calculate kinetic energy the same way as with any other weapon, which I showed in my first uh, spinner design video. And I think I also showed briefly in my last one. So yeah, um, the center of mass though is now one thousandth of an inch off so it looks like it's basically dead on which is nice because i have all round numbers in my selection that just kind of worked out nicely for us um cool so this is good to go and now i can show the process of trying to import this to a manufacturer's website such as pcbway to get it cnc machined pcbway is a trusted name in manufacturing high quality pcbs and assembly services at their facilities in shenzhen china you can get 10 PCBs up to 100mm by 100mm as low as $5, and on top of that, right now all new PCBWay customers get $5 off, making the boards effectively free plus shipping. But that's not all. For bot builders like us, we can make use of their 3D printing, CNC machining, and sheet metal fabrication services. They'll machine S7 tool steel, 4130 alloy steel, aluminum 7075, 6061, and much, much more. Check them out at the link in the description. All right, so how do we export this to actually get it into PCBWay's quoting system? Um, so first things first, let me get out of this so I can show the whole process. Um, we're going to go to File, Export, and we're going to export as a step file. I'm exporting mine to the desktop for the sake of example. I'm replacing it because I already did this. Go to Show and Explorer and pull up a window with the part in it. Now I go online, I'm just going to search for PCB way and hit CNC and I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see everything. So now I'm just going to click and drag my file right in here. Boom. There it is. And for materials, um, for a beater bar like this, I'm going to go with either an alloy steel or a tool steel. Um, so S7 is a really common choice for tool steels. 
though keep in mind it is a rather um, hard steel when it is heat treated and it's also very brittle a less brittle option is to go into hourly steel and check uh, 4140 or if you're using a different service than pcb way that offers 4130 that's another very similar option so we look at the material description you'll see alloy steel 4130 is a chromium molybdenum and manganese containing low alloy steel now chromium molybdenum steels are sometimes referred to as chromoly steels as a shorthand so you might hear me use that term every once in a while so it's a chromoly steel it has high fatigue strength abrasion and impact resistance toughness and torsional strength so in other words it's really good for beater bars um, however this material and the tool steels will be machined in what is called an annealed state with which basically means it's softened and it needs to be hardened with a heat treat in order to be usable so you'll have to look up like uh, local heat treatment places and you'll probably have to call some place or I have no idea what this company is. I've never actually used them. Just like look up local heat treatment places, tell them, hey, I've got like this part that's small. It weighs like less than a pound and I'd like to get it to be heat treated. This In this case, it's only 10 ounces. Some places charge by the pound, so it'll probably not be that expensive, but it could be as much as maybe like 50, 75 bucks. Most likely it won't be too much more than that to get it heat treated on top of the cost of actually getting a machine. Now, for machining, you pretty much always have a high cost for a single part, and oftentimes the prices will go down as you order more. Also, these quotes are not final. Uh, PCB Way will give you an estimate, and then when you actually hit submit request, it will then basically um, have a human being check over it. So I will wait for a little bit and see if a human being checks this and updates the price and then i will show the finalized price on screen if that happens shortly otherwise you can just go through this process yourself with whatever design you come up with and you can see how much it costs all right that's all i have for you today uh, if you haven't checked out my new website make sure to do that i've got a lot of cool stuff on there including some custom design products just for bot builders that i sell and uh, lots of other info about the channel. You can find some of the stuff about how I got started with this on my YouTube channel page and on my website. So yeah, if this is the first video of mine that you're seeing, make sure to check out my back catalog. Uh, if you've got any questions or concerns or just want to let me know that this was helpful to you, let me know in the comments down below. And make sure to hit like if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And also check out my other three videos in my spinner design series. The first two are much older than this one. And they go into all the theory and math behind how to actually design a weapon that's like actually good. And then the part three was designing a two-dimensional weapon like I have on Division in these clips. That is asymmetrical but can still deal lots and lots of damage. And then I, in this part four video just showed how to do it with a specific type of three-dimensional weapon um, which is more expensive but also extremely effective in fights so yeah that's all i've got for you today and as always thanks for watching